Hello YouTube, it's Nicole and I'm back, hopefully, hopefully, um, with some good news. I'm sure you could see my arms. Um, do you see the discoloration on them? Not at the, my iMac is older, it doesn't have the greatest camera on it. But if you look at it, you see this and you see my wrist. Do you see how fat that wrist is? And that elbow and everything, everything. I mean, every piece of me. Do you see that? So today and yesterday I woke up and yesterday my forearm was like that. It was still very, very, very inflamed. Do you see that? You see how inflamed that is? It's still inflamed. However, it was so much more yesterday and this morning. I was um, breaking out from essentially where you would have short sleeves all the way down. And uh, on fire, just like it was on my face. When I had this on my face, my face was on fire through here. I mean, seriously, that's why they put me on morphine. My arms, from here all the way down to my wrist, feels like there's a torch on side of, you know, on top of it. So it's kind of, um, and it itches too now, and it wasn't itching for days. It, it was just crazy. I couldn't work. I couldn't even think at work. At some point, I was talking to this one, um, this one uh, college student, and in talking to him, the pain was so bad, I almost fell down. Seriously, I almost fell down and passed out. So I went home. Um, I'm okay now. <laughs> I really am. I went to my doctor and had a shot. Um, Meterol? Meterol? Solumeterol? Uh, some kind of Meterol. It's uh, like uh, prednisone. Um, only it's intramuscular, like my hormones, <laughs> and it lasts longer. And uh, the swelling has gone down, I'd say about 25% since I've been home. Um, and uh, the pain is still there, um, which is why my doctor gave me some painkillers. But I only take those when I go to sleep, because I'm not like this pain pill junkie. I mean, they'll give them to me all the time, and I'll wind up throwing them out half the time. I wonder what it's going to be like for GRS. So, let me get into today's topic very quickly. Um, my whole medical situation is um, little by little going behind me. Um, of course, I'm itching like crazy. I to like pull my skin off, but we'll get past that. So, I uh, started my blog again over at web.me.com forward slash Sarah Maybe. Remember when my name was Sarah? <laughs> well, the Sarah Maybe turned out to be Sarah Not. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I do that uh, blog out there, and I started really talking about like all the thoughts that are in my head as I'm getting closer to my surgery. Now, I'm sorry, I am going to be itching tonight because my skin is crawling, but I, I've been updating it daily, so I'm trying to blog there at least every day. And the things I've blogged about so far um, have been about my GRS, which is four months from today and about sexuality, which is very important to me right now because um, I, I'm, a, I'm a girl that entered into transition saying, I love women and I'm only going to love women and girls love me and there's no way I'm ever going to like a boy and you know, please don't fall for me because I can't be there for you. And the truth of the matter is, Oh boy, I didn't know it was going to happen. You can't start transition and have all these predetermined thoughts when you haven't even lived a day as a girl and say, that's never going to happen to me because you know what? It all happened to me. I'm not saying that, you know, if you're a boy, come and get me. What I'm saying more or less is that definitely not ruled out like it was before. <laughs> All right, I'm like abnormally thinking that, okay, I'm open to both sexes, that's okay. It doesn't mean that I don't like girls. It just means that I like being treated like a girl. Who knows? And um, I think what I've learned over the past two weeks of freaking out about it is not to freak out about it. Just let happen what happens because, you know, in transition, Things just come at you at a mile a minute. And that is my blog entry out there. Go read it. It's pretty unique. So um, when I went to the doctor today, and I put this on my Facebook, but I'm going to say it here. Little boy named Tyler. 
cutest little boy in the world, like three years old, must have been like, you know, when you look at this, he was like probably not even as high as my molding over here, which is what, 36 inches? <laughs> and he's looking up and looking down and looking up and looking down and goes, you're wearing girl's gear. And I said, well, that's because I'm a girl, sweetie. And he goes, no, you're not. You lied. You're a boy. <laughs> I go, well, honey, I'm a girl. And he goes, well, you look like a boy. I said, I know. I said, that's the way God made me. He said, oh, is that why you're here? I said, no, but I go to another doctor to fix that. And he looks at me and goes, that really sucks. Good luck with that. <laughs> I was like, out of, the mind, out of the mouths of babes, I was like floored. And I didn't take it bad because the office was filled with middle-aged men. I'm telling you. There were a bunch of 40 to 50-year-old men in there, maybe two women. <laughs> One of the women was this son's, you know, it was this little boy, uh, Tyler's mom, and she looks at him and she goes, See, Tyler, I told you it was a girl. Miss, what's your name? I said, Well, I'm Nicole. And she goes, You are such a lovely young lady. And I looked at her, I said, Young, I'm 46. She goes, You're a liar. I'm like, Well, at least I know where your son gets that from. I said, All right, I'm not 46, I'm 28. And she goes, Yeah, that's more believable. Well, world, I'm 46. If I look 28, Hey, God gave me good genes. What could I tell you? All right, so I'm very energetic today, and I wonder how much of it has to do with the steroid I got, because I got all the energy in the world, and you want to know what? Half of me wants to go to sleep, and the other half wants to go outside and run a marathon. So uh, I know I talk a lot. I'm trying to keep my, you know, my, my, my videos down to a, you know, quick... 30, 45 minutes, just kidding, 10 minutes. So the last thing I, I want to talk about is just an update on that last video I did called, uh, you know, getting the insurance run around. So here's the update. My surgery is scheduled. And my surgeon went and did the predetermination. At the same time, my um, other pieces were going through, which is last week, I had, um, or three weeks ago at this point, I had laser surgery on my genitals. Yes, I said genitals on a video. And I had laser hair removal, I should say. And that is covered. It's a covered benefit. And my GRS is a covered benefit. But Thursday, and yeah, Thursday, both of those items were declined by UHC saying that I'm not covered. Oh my lord, what a runaround. And um, in, in passing, I found that the laser is covered and will be. And I found out that the surgeon just needs to do what they call a gap exception. That when the surgeon filled out all the paperwork for the surgery, instead of calling it GRS, they just listed, I'm sorry, I wanted to scratch my face there and I just put my fingers there. They listed the surgery as a bunch of CPT codes instead of GRS and then a bunch of CPT codes. So when the predetermination department in USC got it, they just kicked it out saying, hey, well, you're an out-of-network provider, which every single one of the surgeons that provide GRS are, and this surgery is given within 30 miles of, you know, of Nicole's house, so you're going to be declined. And that was funny. Because I live in Atlanta, and the hospitals do not allow GRS. So at first, I thought they declined the GRS. And what they did is they declined the request because it was a list of CPT codes, like I said. And in the very, very, very end, it was kicked out because one of those CPT codes, which was an orchiectomy, which is a removal of your testes, bilateral orchiectomy, was actually um, given by a surgeon out here who claims to do GRS. Well, like I said, none of the hospitals around here allow it. It's going to wind up going back for a gap exception. I'm going to be covered, and I don't have to jump through the soup anymore. But now here's the kicker. When I call UHC, I have gotten nothing but the most pleasant and helpful and going out of their way people in the world. It seems to be that it's not a person but a process that's wrong here for me. And the only reason I bring this to anybody's attention, it's not to rub in that I have insurance, but it's understood that many companies 
not just mine, are going to be offering this service in the future, are going to be offering this benefit. In fact, this year, if you work for Apple or Campbell's or um, like the 60 companies, so if you work for them, you have gender identity disorder coverage and everything from um, therapy to hormones to breast to trach to GRS just like we do. So where I thought it was unique to my company, it's actually 60 companies this year. So um, I'm only saying this because if I'm having this issue and you work for Apple and you watch my videos, you might have this issue. <laughs> if you work for one of those other companies and you're covered by um, UHC, you might have this issue. And it really is just one of these things that you have to plan each thing long enough out, you know, far enough out, so you can get past these pioneering issues. Because, you know, this is the new wave. The new wave is that you're going to be covered under insurance plans for this in the future, little by little. And why do I say that? Well, the, what is it, WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, that writes the standards of care, which used to be Harry Benjamin's, I think. I'm so sorry, Oreo eating person, for not knowing that. Um, but the standards of care are, are documents that are followed and depict how we should be cared for as a transgender person and what steps should be taken and what surgery should be covered. And since they now consider them medically necessary, in fact, check with your accountant this year. I know you just did your, did your taxes, but if you had surgery this past year, it's very possible. I don't know if it's probable, but it's very possible that you may be able to claim a deduction for the surgeries that you paid for if they are listed as medically necessary on the standards of care. Like I said, don't take my word for it, investigate it. But one of my friends indeed has um, requested um, for that to be done. All right. So before my face and my body jumps off the rest of my bones, I just wanted to get that out, you know. So. You know, all these things that, yeah, I'm so fortunate that I have these things paid for doesn't mean that everything's just coming to me. Like, I'm sitting here, oh, thank you. It's like soaking in the sun. It's not. I'm actually out there working to make this get, you know, to make this happen for me. But at the same time, when things aren't working for me, aren't happening for me, I'm going through the process of finding out what is supposed to work and I am indeed writing down the things that I find that worked so the next girl in line, or guy, <laughs> has the knowledge that I have. I received so many get well wishes through YouTube and through my Facebook. I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much. It made me feel so much better. Like I said, I love you all. Thank you for watching. It's always a pleasure to sit here and do the videos with you and for you. And I will talk to you soon. Goodbye. Later.